Thank you so much, Mr. Camacho. And uh, as mentioned, my name is Mr. Straley, and uh, I'm the activities director at Cesar Chavez Middle School. And I want to welcome you all to um, Cesar Chavez Middle School. And you're all going to your your children are all going to be on their way to becoming Hawks really soon. Um, and so we just wanted to to welcome you um, to this parent night as the first step in making that that leap from elementary school to um, middle school. And so I want to turn things over to, um, you know, I want to introduce some folks. Uh, first off, um, we have Miss Gallagher. If you could introduce yourself, Miss Gallagher, tell us who you are. Hi, my name is Doris Gallagher. I'm the band director at Cesar Chavez Middle School. Welcome. Right. And then uh, Miss Defy, can you introduce yourself, please? Good evening, everyone. I'm Ms. Defai. I am one of the assistant principals here at Cesar Chavez Middle School. I am primarily responsible for students whose last names fall between the letters of A through L. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Mr. Cruz. I'm a counselor here um, with all the students' last names H through O. All right, Mrs. Silva. Good evening, parents. I'm another counselor here at school. I'm Miss Silva, and I am the counselor for students whose last names are P through Z. Welcome. Uh, Mrs. Zapata. Thank you, Mr. Straley. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mrs. Zapata. I'm the other assistant principal, and I support students whose last name begins with the letters M through Z. And last but not least, Mrs. Hardy. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Ms. Hardy, and I'm the counselor for students' last names beginning with A through last names beginning with G. All right, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, just a little um, uh, note about formatting. Our, our presentation tonight will be mostly a slideshow presentation that we'll talk details around. And then um, there's some videos that we've made to make your journey and your learning a little bit easier. And those will um, be archived on our YouTube channel. So if you don't get it all tonight, you'll be able to you know, access it later on. But that's kind of the format that we're gonna use for tonight. So um, with no further ado, I think unless Mr. Camacho is anything else you want to say before we get started. Just one more reminder that we do have interpretation both in Spanish and sign language for any uh, families that uh, have arrived late. Tenemos interpretación otra vez en español. So si marcas el globo por el bajo de página uh, y uh, marcas español o Spanish, uh, puedes escuchar todo en español. Uh, same thing for uh, American Sign Language. If you need interpretation for sign language, uh, please go to the portion that is marked Portuguese. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Camacho. Thought it was queued up, it clearly wasn't. All right, we um, took the time to introduce ourselves. So this is uh, just, you know, the official written page of, of who we are, but we just did our introduction. So I'll go to the next slide. So at CCMS, we work really hard to make our sixth graders feel welcome. Um, we have a program, it's mentioned below, it's called WEB. Uh, and, and what we do in that program is we partner every sixth grader with an eighth grade mentor to kind of show them the ropes, kind of give them, you know, the lay of the land and to have at least one um, peer contact that they can, you know, ask questions to and kind of help guide them as they make their transition from um, elementary school to middle school. As you can see, we have about approximately 300 incoming sixth graders. Uh, this is largely due to our declining enrollment, um, just, you know, sort of sharing that information so you're kind of aware of what's happening. Um, another system that we use uh, and we're going to continue to try to implement it more throughout our system is the five-star system. Uh, and basically what that is, um, 
it's multifunctional. We use it to um, try to award points to students for participating in events or clubs or uh, after school activities as a way to incentivize um, being part of the culture. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that the first three days of school, uh, students, all students, including sixth graders, will be involved in a school wide orientation program. Um, that everybody gets every year uh, to kind of set the tone for the for the school year. So that's just a little bit about CCMS and what you can expect. So uh, this evening is geared for parents. And we know, uh, I know earlier today, I did ask for your uh, students to join us as well too, your children, uh, because I think there's a, a lot of information that uh, everyone needs to hear a few times. Uh, and there, there isn't much to, to be uh, quiet or private about as well, too. And we say this jokingly, but it does happen uh, sometimes. Uh, we, we want you to be here with us, even if your child doesn't want to. Uh, and this, 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 this is said lovingly. Um, I do have uh, two teens myself, and I used to be their best friend for the longest time. And, and uh, with time, you know, uh, you know, they want to spend a little more time with the, with their friends than they do uh, with uh, myself and, and, and their mom. Uh, so there, there is that transition, uh, but we really need your participation. Many of you spend a, a lot of time supporting uh, the teachers or uh, the, the staff at, at uh, the elementary schools that you're at uh, currently. And we want to encourage that participation to, to continue. Uh, and there's many different avenues for that to occur. Uh, we are always, uh, every year, we do need representation at school site council, uh, and that's where uh, parents get to learn more about how we make decisions here at the school, the, that whole process, how money is spent uh, for students, and uh, yeah, just really getting a stronger sense. The council is made up not only of administrators, but also teachers and classified, and so we really need that well-rounded um, uh, 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 view from from not only the staff that work here, but also from from you all at home as well. From there, we also have the English Learner Advisory Committee, ELAC, uh, and that's for our families who uh, speak uh, languages other than English at home uh, and whose students uh, classify as English learners. Uh, and they meet uh, a few times a year as well, too. Sorry, School Site Council does meet once per month. Uh, and uh, the ELAC committee meets anywhere from uh, four, four to five times, depending on what, what's happening. We also hold uh, monthly meetings uh, for the parent volunteer committee. <clears throat> and uh, that's, that's uh, you know, exactly what it says. We, we do need support for different events that happen on campus. And uh, this is also a fantastic way for, for uh, parents to also get to meet and do things behind the scenes for, to support our staff. Uh, so we, we're always very uh, grateful for the support that we get from the PBC committee. Uh, from there, uh, you, uh, we also need support with our carnivals, jogathons, the Tough Mudder. We have festivals uh, that occur um, in, uh, for Halloween as well as uh, in the spring. And then, of course, the eighth grade activities as we round up the, the three years here with us at Cesar Chavez. And we can't wait to get back to things like field trips as well, too. And then, of course, last but not least, uh, there is a, a copy with the principal, that's which is held monthly as well. There is no agenda for this. It's pretty much come in, ask your questions, bring up your concerns, uh, and, and you get to basically have one-on-one -on -one access with, with me. Sometimes we also bring in guest speakers counselors, the assistant principals, the superintendent. Uh, it just really depends on, on what you all as parents want to hear and what information that you need. Thank you, Mr. Strader. Good evening. Once again, I'm Venice Hardy, and I'm uh, one of the three counselors here. I'm alphabet A, last names A to L, or I'm sorry, A to G. And I want to talk to you about some of the resources that we have here for you to help you sort of stay informed, uh, stay in communication, and to help you uh, help your student. 
as they're transitioning into their middle school career. The first, I think most of you are familiar with, which is Parent Connect. And that is where you can go uh, to, first of all, update your information, your contact information, uh, your emergency contacts and so on. But you can also see uh, grades, you can see your students' attendance, uh, you can see contact information for the teacher and, um, and various other information. Okay, and I wanna stress, please make sure that we always have the current contact information for you, whether that's your email address, your phone number, uh, job phone numbers, and the emergency contacts. Mr. Straley. Okay, and then Canvas. So all of you are probably familiar with Seesaw uh, in the elementary school. Coming to middle school, you'll be leaving Seesaw and coming on to Canvas, which is the program for middle school and high school. All right, so you can utilize Canvas to see uh, assignments, the current ones, future ones. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, grades there. And you can also sign yourself up as an observer of your student, meaning that you will get all of the current information. You'll be able to see all of the information about assignments and grades as well. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Cruz. Um, so what can us counselors do for you and uh, the student? So counselors provide a safe, confidential setting where students can get support and help through life's up and downs. Um, we provide social, emotional, and academic support. Uh, counselors can also help in moments uh, of transition, anxiety, stress, grief, and other life circumstances. Uh, for example, a lot of times kids um, have a little bit of uh, anxiety around changing for PE, right? Having to change their clothes and different clothes and doing all that. So um, they'll come to us and we'll help them out. Um, how can your child meet with us? Um, so when we are in school, they can just simply come in uh, and, and you know, uh, we're available before school uh, break at lunch and then after school. Um, they can also set an appointment with us now through email. Just send us an email and say, hey, Mr. Cruz, uh, Ms. Hardy, Ms. Silva, um, I'd like to talk or I'm feeling anxiety or I'm curious about what middle school is going to be like, anything like that. Uh, we're here to help. Um, so we are a support system um, uh, for all students. Thank you. So having a counselor, having counselors is something new for you and your students. Um, and so the question, what, when do I contact my counselor? What kinds of things can my counselor provide? Well, um, the list here, academic concerns. Uh, your child is going from having one main teacher to having five teachers. Uh, and that's a lot of different personalities, different uh, particular information and in communicating with the teachers. And also they are learning to manage their time and um, kind of juggle things. That's what's gonna be required of them from now through high school. And so um, if you are having concerns, your child is having concerns, counselors are here to meet with you and help your child develop skills that are gonna help them be successful and also give you tools to, uh, to help monitor them and help them uh, to be successful students. Also, you know, they're in a, in a time of change. And so sometimes personal issues come up it may be their own personal issues. It could be something that involves uh, maybe home and family and counselors are a place that they can come, kind of put their feelings out there, you know, have someone hear them. We can give them suggestions and guidance as to, you know, how to maintain. Um, behavioral concerns, you know, this is a brand new setting and they're still figuring out, you know, who they are and what's the way to be. So we are also there every day to support them as they are figuring out those changes. Um, just about any concern that you have or your child has, counselors can support you. Sometimes it's social, you know, their, their friends and uh, classmates are a very big part of their life. And sometimes they need a little help in navigating those waters. Sometimes uh, conflicts arise. You, that's what we're there for is to help them resolve, help them learn to communicate um, so that they have the best middle school experience possible. 
And sometimes uh, the student or the family may be in, in need of resources that are outside of the school. And so we are that liaison, we're that connection to put you in touch with services or resources that you may need outside of school. Thank you. So um, your child should have received an email today in their district email. Um, and that includes the link to the pre-registration process for them to select their elective course. Um, those forms are due this Friday, um, February 26th. Um, I'm uh, Mr. Shirley, can you go ahead and click on that so I can show parents what that looks like, please? This video will explain how to fill that out. Oh, or I will tell you how to fill that out. Um, it's Friday, February 26th. Yeah. So make sure you hurry and talk to your parents and get your forms in, okay? First thing you're going to do is you're going to put your last name here. You're going to put your first name here. Down here, you're going to put your student ID number. If you do not know your student ID number, please ask your parents or your teachers for the student ID number. Then you're going to come over here and select what elementary school are you coming from? Are you coming from Emanuel's, Hillview, Kitayama, Cyril's, PLA, or other? Then this is where the fun begins. Please choose your two elective choices from the drop down menu below. Okay. If you click on this link, it'll open, it'll give you descriptions of the electives that we offer. So we have the activity wheel, which is a course that changes every trimester. So you can have cooking one trimester, computers the next, Spanish the next, changes, right? Then we have choir, which is all year long. And then we have band, which is also all year long. Okay. So you select your first choice, whatever your first choice is. Now, 90% of the time you won't get your first choice, but sometimes the class could be full. So we'll accommodate you with your second choice. So you're gonna select your first choice and then you'll come down here and you can select your second choice, okay? And then hit submit, okay? And remember, it is due by this Friday, all right? Good luck, see you Thank you, Mr. Straley. Um, there are a few questions on the chat that I wanna address about that. Um, parents will not be able to open the document. Um, only the children will, only your child will through their New Haven email um, as it logs who is turning it in. So make sure you're opening it through your child's email account. Um, and they should have received it today um, from our school secretary, Ms. Erica Ramirez. Next slide. As Mr. Strilly is working on, the question came up if a student accidentally submitted without uh, their, their parents uh, reviewing and looking at it, can they resubmit? So they, will, they won't be allowed to resubmit because we've only allowed each student to put in one submission, but it leads us right into this last, oh, back up one, Mr. Strilly. Lead, nope, the next one, yep. <laughs> it leads us right into this. Um, page because um, you will have to contact your child's assigned counselor so that they can go in and make the edits um, for you. Um, so if they have already submitted it, then you will need to contact us so that we can make that change. You won't be able to do it again. So how can you contact your child's counselor? Um, you can either call us um, by phone, which is our school phone number, 487-1700. Uh, and when the operator comes on, um, select our extensions and you see you have this, the extensions listed there by counselor. Um, I would say though that the best um, way to get a hold of us and the easiest way to get a hold of us, especially right now during virtual times, um, is to email us. And so all teachers, all staff have the same ending at nhusd.k12.ca.us. Um, but the initial part is our first initial and our last name. So you also have that information on this slide. Next slide. Um, many parents are concerned um, about their child's IEP or their child's 504. Um, 
So if your child has a current 504 in elementary school, and that is not very many students, um, so some parents may be saying what's a 504 or what's an IEP, um, those are individualized plans for students who have either a learning disability or a medical condition. Um, and so you don't have to worry about those. Um, all 504s and all IEPs will transfer over from the elementary sites to us. We do as a team meet with all the elementary schools and get the information about each of our 504 students in their files, their plans, um, and their IEPs. All 504 plans get reviewed at the beginning of the school year with teachers. Um, we give them at least three to four weeks before we start having those meetings to review them. Although we do send them the fifth grade 504 plan so that they know what the accommodations are as soon as we start school, we don't review them until about three or four weeks later as we want the teachers to get to know their, your child a little bit um, better um, because we may want to modify the plan if things arise. Um, we do have a case carrier for IEPs, so counselors do not do IEPs. Counselors, do, counselors and administrators do 504s. Um, case carriers and administrators do IEPs. And so if you have any questions or concerns or just some in doubts about what is going to happen in the middle school, we do have a department head for um, special ed. Her name is Ms. Oñate. Um, her email is listed there so that you can also reach out to her if you have any questions. Next slide, please. And uh, what about math placement for sixth graders? So we, um, we do offer advanced math um, and that placement is done by um, test scores, um, two different modes, either the NWEA or the CASP. Um, students who received a 235 on their winter NWEA um, already are going to be automatically placed in our accelerated math class. Um, students who in the spring take the six plus NWEA and score a 235 or higher will also be placed in our accelerated math class. Or if they uh, get a four on their CASP exam, it'll get, uh, get them into accelerated math. Um, but not to worry if they did not get a 235 already, um, they will have another opportunity to retake the NWA six plus in the fall um, in their regular math six class. And if they do score a 235 or higher at that moment, then we can move them into accelerated math as well. Um, I know there's gonna be a lot of questions about accelerated math and towards the end, Mr. Camacho will go more in depth as to what accelerated math actually means. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Silva. So uh, accelerated math and sixth grade math. Sixth grade math is uh, the, the, um, the class that everyone naturally progresses to uh, from uh, elementary school into middle school. Uh, so the topics in uh, sixth grade math or math six are operations with fractions and decimals, finding the area, working with ratios, uh, which is a fancier way of saying fractions. Uh, integers, one-step equations, surface area, and statistics. Uh, the next option uh, for students that, that are at a higher level in mathematics is accelerated math. And I do need to point out that accelerated is exactly what it, uh, what it states. Uh, accelerated math means that you're two grade levels above um, math six. So it's extremely challenging uh, and it also gets you on pace uh, to get into calculus, uh, not just AB, uh, but actually calculus BC or AP statistics at Logan High School. So uh, we really are talking about, um, you know, being a, a few steps ahead, not just, hey, my, my child is doing good, they have an A, but they really are setting the trend for what's happening. So uh, there, there is that, um, we, we do make sure to, to test students uh, to see if they are prepared for that. And I'll go into that uh, in detail a little bit later in this presentation. Uh, but I do wanna call out that accelerated math is not just one year ahead, but two years ahead. Uh, and then in accelerated math, the topics that uh, are covered include operations with integers, fractions and decimals, powers, uh, ratios, percents, solving equations, and inequalities. 
and then functions, statistics, transformations, volume, and surface area. So it's everything that's covered in math six, but then it's taken up a, a few levels. So, uh, and just, just to give you a little precursor that when you go uh, in our traditional uh, projection, math six, seven, and eight, by the time you enter into Logan High School, that means you are ready for algebra one. So I just wanted to, to make sure that we get that uh, clear and, uh, and set up. So in addition to math, students will also be placed in a core class and core is a, basically two different subjects. It is English language arts and cultures of the world for sixth graders and that is social studies. Uh, typically these are two periods that are often taught by the same teacher. There will be instances where a student will be um, in their schedule scheduled into a split core which still will be English language arts and social studies but they will have two different teachers. Um, the language arts, it's broken up into reading and writing. They study a variety of literature and genres through our collections textbook. They also read core novels and do some, a lot of independent reading. And then writing is basically a focus around uh, different genres such as narrative, literary essay, feature article, poetry, and argumentative essays. And then the second part of the core, which is their second period, uh, would be social studies and cultures of the world. Um, and they basically will be studying ancient cultures um, and traveling through uh, civilizations and studying civilizations such as Mesopotamia, Egypt, China, and so on. And basically um, seeing and making connections on how those cultures began, flourished, and how they influence our lives today. Okay, I'll be talking to you all about science. Again, I'm Mrs. Zapata. I'm one of the assistant principals. So science in middle school happens every day. So that is a little bit of a change for um, your children and our new students. Um, we're really excited that um, your children will be experiencing science labs. So all of our science classes are well equipped with lab areas in every single classroom. Uh, we do follow the next generation integrated science standards. So you might hear people talk about next gen standards. That's all they're talking about is the next gen um, California state standards. And so that just means that your children will be studying earth and space, life and physical sciences. And the science department does want you to know that there's not a lot of science um, homework. So I know that's like a always a popular question from parents at this evening meeting afterwards. Parents always ask, how much homework um, do we expect from science? How much homework do we expect every night from core, from math? So for science, the only homework that you would expect would be what your child doesn't finish in class. So their homework is the classwork that they don't finish. So another shift from elementary school is that students will be having PE every day as well. Um, they'll have it Monday through Friday. They will be graded on participation, dress, and assessments, which include written and performance-based assessments. They also have writing tests where students will gradually work up to running different lengths, such as the 400 meters all the way up to the mile. Uh, students are going to be required, you know, based on a traditional setting to dress in their PE uniform every day. Um, although they're not required to purchase a PE uniform from the school, um, we do have PE uniforms available for purchase. Um, otherwise they can wear um, a gray shirt, um, blue shorts, and then, or, I'm sorry, an orange shirt, blue shorts, and then all, um, if when it's cold, they can also wear gray sweats over their shorts. Um, and the, we do have a link in order to purchase the PE uniforms, which will be accessible throughout the year. Uh, lastly, students will be issued a PE locker and a PE lock, um, and they will not be able to bring their PE lock from home. We do have a variety of sports here at Chavez as well. Um, we are part of the SACMA League, which offers a, a variety of sports programs throughout the year. Um, when we are able to go ahead and, you know, participate in after school activities and sports again, we do have 12 athletic programs ranging from track and field all the way to golf. Um, typically we have two to three different sports per season. And so students are able to try out 
uh, and if they meet the eligibility requirements, they will be able to participate and try out for our sports teams. What do I need to do to know if my child wants to join the CCMS choir? So first off, uh, choir is a year long elective class. Uh, students learn the basics of singing, music reading and an ensemble. So uh, from there, uh, they sing a variety of different types of genres like jazz, Broadway, show choir, uh, treble choir. And then they also sometimes work with um, uh, our older students as well too. So. Uh, there's opportunity for more than just their peers uh, and then it, it just really uh, builds and boosts camaraderie uh, because uh, Logan High School does offer a choir program and their their highest program jazz choir uh, travels uh, extensively through through the state uh, and, and it's really impressive to see their, their program. <clears throat> Students also sing pop jazz folk arrangements and then we also are big around making sure that we uh, uh, introduce music from uh, around the world. So uh, that we're definitely interested in uh, uh, promoting uh, music from, from across the, uh, the world. Uh, students engage in recreational singing and public performances at school and evening concerts. Uh, so obviously, you know, we're, we're still working through the pandemic. So those, those parts, uh, we're, we're still working through to figure out what, what um, life will look like, but we are able to do things virtually uh, as well presently. From there, there's a lot of team building activities, community building. Uh, normally we would have uh, students uh, would have heard the, uh, the band and the choir today uh, during orientation, but that's really hard to pull off while, when students are still in class. And then from there, they work a lot on the social emotional skills uh, and that's a, there's a big emphasis there in, in, that, in the class along with creativity and self-expression. Uh, there is a little welcome video that's here that um, Ms. Missy King wants to share. Hey, all you fifth graders. Who, me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Do you absolutely love to sing? Or how about write your own songs? Do you love performing? Do you like being part of a team where you can make loads of friends? then maybe choir is for you. Look, there's me, I'm floating on a music note. Okay, that wasn't actually me. This is me right here, Miss B, the choir teacher. And that's my son, Edison. I talk about him a lot. Anyway, back to choir. Aren't you so excited to join choir? We're a super fun, super awesome, really amazing group of people. Not only do we sing, but we also do some really fun projects. We've made commercials, We've done projects about musical artists. Welcome to Musical Artist in One Minute. Tyler Unconwa, better known as Tyler the Creator, was born in 1991 in Los Angeles, California. We even tried a little rapping. One berry, two berry, pick me a blueberry, hat berry, shoot berry, and I can But wait, there's more. We play games, go on field trips, watch cool performances. We just have loads of fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, then why don't you come join us at Cesar Chavez Middle School Choir. Ms. Gallagher, you're next. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Um, my name is Doris Gallagher. I'm the band director, as I've so said earlier. And um, 
I know this has been a crazy year for all of us almost. We're 11 months in and who knows, but hopefully we're out of this sooner than later. But the one thing I'm so proud to say is that in the band class, we're learning instruments. We have about 100 students, brand new beginners that picked up instruments last September, and we're all playing instruments at home on screen. We're able to record ourselves and have lots of fun in class. So I want to share a little bit of information that I have with you. A little bit about our band program. Let's see, here I go. Are you able to see that? I have no idea, I'm sorry. Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, a little bit about our band program. So we have three bands that meet during the day. So we have a beginning band, which is all beginning musicians. And then we have an intermediate band, which is called the concert band. Those students are typically um, seventh graders, but sometimes there's eighth graders in there. And then our most advanced group is a symphonic band. And those are mostly eighth graders, but sometimes seventh graders. And so the concert band, symphonic band are based on the level of proficiency where the beginners is everybody who has not played the instrument they've selected to learn goes into. In addition to those three bands that meet every day at the same period all year long, we have um, two clubs that I like to do. Um, one is jazz band and we just meet after school to have fun and learn a new genre of music. And then also drumline is also a club that meets after school just for fun. And typically they perform concerts or perform at sporting events, basketball games, volleyball games, football games. We try to get out as much as possible. And currently we have about 200 students enrolled in the band program. So who can be in band? Every one of you should be in band. Every one of you I know loves music. You've always loved music. Your parents sang to you as babies. And that you're probably your first song was Twinkle Twinkle or ABC song. So we know everyone has music in their blood and in their soul. There is no experience necessary or required. I will teach you absolutely everything you need to learn in class. However, if you do have experience, you already play ukulele, you already play piano, then you're more than welcome. You'll just be a little bit ahead of everyone else, which is not a bad thing. What happens at the beginning, Dan? Lots of different things happen. So we'll learn how to play our instrument. That includes putting it together, cleaning it, taking it apart. We'll also learn how to read and play music and basic rehearsal techniques like how to sit up straight, how to work with a, a large group of people at one in one setting. And then my hope, and I have my fingers crossed that we will get to play our first concert in December 2021. I know that's a lofty goal with based on our circumstances, but I always have hope that we're gonna get to play a real life concert soon. What instruments can be chosen? The flute, clarinet, alto saxophone, the woodwind family, and then we have the brass family, trumpet and trombone. And then we also have percussion, which is drums and keyboards. The thing with percussion is it just isn't drums or keyboards. You're signing up to learn a variety of instruments, including bass drum, triangle, tambourine. It runs the gamut. So there's many, many choices um, or many, many instruments to learn in the percussion class. Do you need to have any prior musical experience? No. If you know nothing, yay, that's okay. It's my job to teach teach you everything you need to know. So I know some of you might be a little bit scared, like, oh, I don't know how to do anything. Good, that's okay. That's what school is for, is to learn. Do you need to audition? No, absolutely not. There is no audition. However, I will send a link to all the students who choose band as their first choice only. And I will meet with you and help you learn about the instruments again in more detail. And then you can choose my first choice is second clarinet. My second choice is alto saxophone. And my third choice is percussion. You will get to decide that you will get one of your choices. I will never put you on an instrument that you didn't select yourself. How much does it cost? There is no cost to be in band. No one should ever have to pay. I think that this, if you wanna learn, then you need to learn now. Because right now you guys have lots of time on your hands. As you get older, you're gonna say, I woulda, shoulda, coulda when I was in sixth grade. So don't wait. How do I get an instrument? 
your family can rent or buy you one from the music store. And some of you are saying right now, there's no way I can get that. No way. All right. That's perfect. The school has instruments that can be borrowed or checked out at no cost. And it's similar to a library book. You check it out. It's yours. If you drop it, break it, you got to take it to the store for a little repair. Um, but that's pretty much it. It doesn't cost you anything unless you, you do some serious damage to it. I know the question I always get, how much does it cost? It depends what you do. So I don't have an answer for you on that. Um, is band class difficult? It is challenging. I'm not going to lie. It, it, you're going to be great. And then they'll get to a point where you're like, oh, wait, this is harder than I thought it was. And but don't you don't quit. One of the best things I think about being a musician is perseverance. You keep going even when it gets hard, because eventually it won't be hard anymore. And you'll laugh that you couldn't do something before. The average day of a band student, we have band class every day. This is uh, the day starts before school. The students drops off the instrument in the band room. They attend their classes and then return to the band room whenever they have their band class. And then at the end of class, they put the instrument away back on the shelf in its case. And at the end of the school day, they return back to the band room to pick up the instrument and take it home to practice. Yes, th there is homework for band. It's called practicing every day after school, every day, even on the weekends and holidays. So important information to know. Band is a place for everyone. If you're not sure, I'm, you know, you're a little bit nervous about coming to a new place. Band is a place for everyone. There is room for everyone to be in the program. We learn music to make music. It is all, it's in many, many studies around the world. Band students who learn how to play an instrument are more successful in school. I think, um, the last full year we had of school, the average grade point average of the entire band, I calculated to 3.3, which is about a B, B plus or A minus, depending on how you look at it, grade point average in overall grades. The skills that we learned in band are transferable to other subjects in school. You'll see that once we get in class. And then my favorite thing is band makes better human beings and makes human beings better. Many years ago, my eighth grade class, um, we decided to come up with a goal together. And so we all put on our thinking caps and we came up with this as a group. By the end of the school year, we will behave, think, speak, and perform like professional musicians. I always hope that my students will become professional musicians, but if they don't, that's okay too. What I do hope is that they learn the discipline, the um, enjoyment of playing in a large group, of being part of something bigger than themselves. And one thing I do, I love many things. Obviously, I wouldn't have been doing this for all these years. I know I keep saying that over and over. But everybody is first string. On a sports team, you have the first string and second string and maybe even a third. But everybody plays no matter their level or capabilities. And so that's why I think it's a, a welcoming venue for all of you. I hope you'll all consider it at least not this year, maybe in seventh grade, but you should all try it for one year so you can get a chance to figure out for yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher, appreciate that. Uh, a few questions have come up and concerns. Uh, some of you are uh, sharing that uh, your child did not receive their uh, pre-reg form yet. So we are going to work with the elementary principals tomorrow uh, to get that out to, to everyone. So uh, either it will be coming from your home elementary school or we will do a, a second take and work with uh, Ms. Ramirez to, to get the, uh, the email out. All right, with that said, uh, things to look forward to uh, in the upcoming year. Uh, so we, we are uh, trying to figure things out. Sometimes it's day by day, uh, week by week, month by month, uh, month, by month for, for planning uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, so we know that we're uh, excited because the opportunity for uh, educators and everybody from classified to certificated uh, to um, uh, be able to get a chance to get a vaccine has opened up. Uh, the difficulty in that, though, is not everyone is is uh, uh, ready to, to take one as well, too. So there are some challenges with with reopening. Uh, so not and no no one can be forced to take the vaccine. 
Uh, so I just want to make that clear. And then for, for certain, uh, there has not been enough testing on children. Uh, so actually the vaccine would only go to uh, people that are 16 or older. And uh, uh, the 16 year olds are, are basically at the end of the priority list. So we don't know how long it's gonna take for everyone to get the opportunity to, to get the vaccination. We just know it's gonna take some time because we're just still barely getting through all of the first responders in, uh, in the state. Uh, so with that said, uh, we, we know it's really hard to plan for what next year will look like, uh, but the way things are going, we're, we're hoping for the school to reopen in some type of way. Uh, we just really don't know if it's going to be uh, school in a normal setting or, or if it's going to be school in a hybrid type setting. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that students uh, are going to need to come to school uh, masked up. Uh, from there, the big question will be, is there social dis does social distancing still have to occur? Uh, because our classrooms are not designed for, um, for that. Uh, we can only fit maximum usually about 18 students in a classroom. So, uh, and we usually have uh, roughly 30 students or more, uh, depending on the class, and sometimes a lot more. Uh, so we aren't able to fit all students in, in all of these areas. So uh, you're going to have to hold tight because uh, we don't have any information that you don't, you aren't aware of. I know that our superintendent gives uh, sends out messages on Fridays and, and just kind of giving uh, updates. Uh, and we know that we've been getting a lot of news from the, the governor and the, uh, the state about uh, the opportunity to reopen. Uh, but with that said, and it sounds very great, but what we don't have are a lot of important details on how to make things like this happen. So uh, those things are, uh, it's, a, it's a slow work in progress. Uh, I don't think any of us, have, I know none of us have lived through a pandemic before. So that's where unfortunately uh, patience uh, is, is going to be needed. And from there, as soon as we find out, we will, we will be sharing that information as well. So for sure, you can look forward to a, a newsletter. I send them out monthly. Uh, they do go out via email uh, and they are uh, translated. You are able to select the language that you want your, um, your newsletter in. So if it's English, Spanish, Mandarin, uh, the Tagalog, there's many different choices. We, we have that available. Uh, it's automatically uh, translated for you. Uh, with that in the newsletter, which is going to all be uh, uh, online, virtual, either you'll receive, you will receive it in your email. It'll also be on our school website. Uh, so that in the event that you don't have uh, that disinformation or you, your, your email is no longer, uh, you're no longer able to use it, uh, you will be able to find this information all on our website as well too. Uh, so please uh, look out for that. Our, the first day um, for, for next year is going to be August 11th, and we anticipate that orientation will be occurring the week before. Uh, and from there, uh, once again, you'll have to kind of wait for us to find out uh, if we're going to be doing this in smaller groups or if it's going to be a, a, a big occasion, which we, we traditionally do. Uh, so we, we may have to do something where orientation occurs over a few days. Uh, so we're, we're, we're getting there. We, we don't have this information yet. Uh, and, and you'll just have to, to hang tight and, and, and work with us. All right, good evening, everybody. It's Mr. Straley again. Um, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna talk about uh, what the elective wheel is, uh, and then I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit more about what leadership is, because that's the program that I'm responsible for. So one of the choices that uh, students will have on their pre-reg form is um, to choose their elective. And the uh, elective wheel is an opportunity for students to you know, kind of explore a variety of classes um, they would change classes every 13 weeks, every trimester, uh, and they would get through three different spokes of the wheel. Now, we can't guarantee which classes they'll get on the wheel, uh, but what we do offer um, for sixth graders on the wheel is an opportunity to take a variety of classes um, as opposed to a year-long commitment for a year-long class. Both have benefits um, and you know, both have drawbacks. And so it's really just a matter of like what your child's preferences are and, and what your preferences are. Uh, some of the classes we uh, have included in the past 
and and you know we we have to wait to see what kids choose to sort of decide what offerings will be available but we've uh, done a music exploration class um, and some of these have links that i'll click on after i'm done talking so you can get a sense of you know what our most recent offerings have been um, so we do home economics which is uh, like uh, uh, learning how to cook and work with textiles uh, multimedia class like i mentioned the leadership class basic spanish We've offered journalism and social justice. Um, and just like I said at the top of this slide, students do take a course for one trimester, which gives them the opportunity to experience three different elective classes in their sixth grade year, which is kind of nice in that, you know, they can kind of explore what their interests might be. And then in seventh and eighth grade, maybe um, commit to a longer class based on something they're really passionate about. So I want to play a couple of videos. My name is Mr. Jackson. This is Blue right here. He's five and a half months old. I'm making this video to introduce myself and to tell you all about the cooking class we have here at CCMS. If you can cook, if you can't cook, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Come join up and have some fun with us, and uh, you know you're gonna have a great time. What you're gonna see following this introduction is a compilation of some videos made by students. Uh, that are in class this year. All right, take it easy. I look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. Uh, hello, my name is Dwight Osha, and I'm in sixth period and eighth grade. And I'll be uh, cooking with my dad as well. And we're, we're going to be uh, cooking a beef, uh, beef soup. And these are ingredients. And you also might, uh, you need a pressure cooker for cooking these as well. As you see right there, that, those are all the ingredients. to bake brownies. You are going to need three and a quarter cup of sugar, three and a quarter cup of oil, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract, three eggs, three and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, a third cup plus two and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder, a half teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and you will also need some nonstick cooking spray or some parchment paper. The first thing you're going to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then you're going to put your sugar, oil, and vanilla extract to a bowl. And then you're going to add your three eggs. After that, you're going to mix it all until it becomes a thick liquid. Then you're going to beat it for around three to four minutes. After that, you're going to add your flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, and salt to a mixing bowl. Then you're going to whisk it all up. Then you're going to add a half of your cocoa powder mixture and add it to the egg mixture. And then you're going to whisk it until it becomes a dark liquid. Then you're going to add the rest of your cocoa powder mixture and add it to the egg mixture and whisk it all. Then you're going to put cooking spray or parchment paper on your brownie tray. Then you're going to add your mixture onto the pan. Next, you're going to put your pan into your oven and wait around 25 to 30 minutes. And after that, you're going to turn off your heat, take out the brownies, and then you're going to start cutting them into brownies. And here's how our brownies looked. They look thick, and we also added powdered sugar, but that's only optional. And now I'm gonna try it. It tasted great. It was nice and thick too. And finally, we're going to wash the dishes. Well, that's all for today. So great job. We successfully baked brownies.
Hola estudiantes, ¿cómo están? Soy la señora Lemos y yo doy clases aquí en la Escuela de César Chávez de Español. Hi students, how are you guys doing? I am Mrs. Lemos and I am the Spanish teacher here at César Chávez. So if you like languages, I suggest you take Spanish. Spanish will be speaking and writing and practicing and having a lot of fun with the language. Um, on the sixth grade wheel, we do learn basic vocabulary words. You'll be learning things like the alphabet, the numbers, uh, vocabulary words, useful phrases, um, like everyday phrases, like greetings, how are you, what's your name? So a lot of fun stuff. So you'll be able to begin learning Spanish on the wheel. You take it for one trimester and then your seventh and eighth grade year, you can choose it again. So for the seventh and eighth grade years, you can take Spanish the entire year versus your sixth grade year, it's only for a trimester. We do prepare you for the world language program at the high school level. So if you do well your seventh and eighth grade years in Spanish, then um, you'll be able to move up to the higher level and take Spanish too. There is an assessment you do need to take. Make sure you do well on that so you can take the higher levels. But if you take it here in middle school, you'll be more than prepared to take the higher level Spanish courses. Um, and then Spanish speakers, I do encourage you to take the Spanish 1B. Can't wait to see you all here at Sasa Chavez next year. Adiós, hasta pronto. I know we're jumping around in screens a lot. So we are uh, almost at the end of our presentation uh, and we have really important information in regards to the math program uh, and how to get into these accelerated courses. Um, so with that said, um, you do have uh, opportunities aside from just this year to be able to get into our uh, accelerated courses. And uh, the, the main way that we identify students is through the NWEA test. All of your students took the winner exam. And if your child scored a 235 or higher, uh, they are automatically enrolled into uh, the, the uh, accelerated math course. And if for some reason your child uh, didn't uh, uh, earn that score, uh, we're going to give this uh, test again in the uh, in the fall when once we return uh, to school and at that time if they score 235 we will be able to go ahead and move them into into the uh, accelerated program as well and for uh, another reason if if students still aren't prepared for for the math course yet then we uh, will give that opportunity for seventh grade as well too so just want to make sure that uh, that folks knew that there are more than uh, there are multiple opportunities to be able to get into accelerated. Uh, by the time we get to eighth grade, though, there are a lot of foundational math, math skills uh, that won't be taught and will have been missed. Uh, so by the time students get to uh, eighth grade, if they're, they aren't in accelerated or algebra one or geometry by then or higher, uh, then they, they will they will continue into math. Eight. There's just too much uh, information there to, to miss at that time. So uh, but there are opportunities uh, for uh, uh, acceleration outside of our district as well too. I know that some students do take uh, courses at the local community college. Uh, we do need to make sure though that, that those classes are, um, uh, let's see, that they are uh, recognized by Logan High School. Uh, so you don't necessarily get anything on your transcript, but you can definitely advance. And you have to be aware, be, uh, be wary because sometimes what looks like the correct label doesn't have the correct foundational uh, um, math that is needed to, to be able to go ahead and be prepared for, for the next level. Uh, Mr. Strelly, if you could open up the uh, pathways recommended for math uh, section, please. Oh, of course. 
think I've got a second computer up. Sorry about that, sir. I'm just hitting refresh here so I can get you access. Oh, there we go. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, once you enter into sixth grade, you're either going to be taking, well, for most students, it's either uh, math six or accelerated math. Sometimes we do have students that are even higher than accelerated. Uh, we do work with Logan High School as well to be able to go ahead and do placement above that, or maybe uh, do, do a diagnostic to see if algebra or geometry is what's needed as well too. Uh, so we do have many options for math in that sense. Australia, if you can get me to the next page, please. One more. So like it says here, uh, the decisions are occurring now on, on whether your, your child is ready for accelerated math or higher based off of the NWA exam. It isn't always, a, we, I'm not sure, I don't believe we're gonna give the six plus uh, test in the spring since we already gave the uh, winter test uh, and we, we, we already have preliminary scores and, and know what's going on. Parents can challenge, uh, but we do need to point out as well too, once again, that this is uh, two years advanced, not just, uh, not just one. So uh, we really wanna make sure that students are, are at that uh, at least algebra level to be able to, to get into accelerated math. Next screen, please. Yeah, for the middle school math placement. So if it's 234 or below, that means uh, uh, most likely you are in, gonna, your child will be placed in math six. Uh, next, next slide. And here we go a little bit further. There's like slides within slides. Okay, so getting to seventh grade then, uh, if your child was in math six, then they would go to math seven unless they score higher than 230, uh, 235 or higher, uh, then they are able to move to accelerated. And then from there, if your child is in accelerated math six, seven, uh, then they move on to algebra one. Next slide, please. Same thing, same thing, we're following the course up above. Uh, next year, your seventh grader is uh, in math seven. So then eighth grade, they go to math eight. And then for accelerated students that are in the seventh grade, they would go on to algebra one. So it's, it's the, you get to see the, the, the message pretty clearly. Uh, but what you don't see later on in, in Logan is all the different uh, AP courses that are available for our students. Uh, so bear with us as we go from slide to slide. Uh, so after algebra one is geometry. <clears throat> And then from there, geometry students entering uh, honors algebra two in the ninth grade will be responsible to complete a summer assignment due the first week of school. Uh, so there, there is work that they want to make sure to, to get out there. So uh, you're on that advanced path. There is a note there at the bottom, eighth grade geometry students who wish to enroll in summer class in a summer class for honors algebra two must follow the directions available from the chairperson at, uh, from Logan's math department. Same thing happens with Algebra 1. We, we are in contact with the, the, the Logan administration to make sure that students are uh, appropriately placed. All right, next, uh, next tab, please. So these are suggestions uh, and they are guided, uh, guided plans. Uh, we do make sure to uh, inform students uh, what happens along the way. So like if we are jumping courses, uh, you need to be aware of what uh, what subjects or topics are not being covered. Uh, and it's it's going to be the responsibility uh, of uh, the family and the student to, to be able to make sure that uh, they, they find a way to, to plug in those uh, those gaps. Let's see. All right, next, uh, next step. Next slide. 
So uh, we do ask that you do uh, work with uh, your counselor uh, to make sure that you are selecting the uh, appropriate courses. Uh, so yeah, as always, uh, make sure to work with us. Next, next slide, please. All right, so getting into ninth grade, uh, your child is either in algebra one, like we stated before, or if they were one year advanced, they go into geometry, or if they are two years advanced, then they are either going into honors algebra two or standard algebra two. And that really depends on how the child, your student did in geometry eighth grade year. So uh, it isn't just an automatic assumption that they go, go into honors algebra two, because there is a big difference between those two courses. And it really has to do with uh, the speed in which they, they uh, go through material, as well as where they, they start off. Right, next slide. So like I mentioned earlier, there are other pathways if your child demonstrates that they are able to uh, perform at this, these high levels, then there are uh, opportunities for summer uh, studies. And that usually involves working with one of our local community colleges. We also, Logan also offers a sequence of computer courses as well too. So if you don't just want the traditional math classes, we also have computer science and, and statistics. Uh, there are online courses for a few that are out there uh, that are available from highly reputable institutions that Logan does recommend. So the department has a list of those acceptable options. Um, also, Logan can sometimes provide opportunities for students to demonstrate their readiness after a summer of individualized self-study. So we do have diagnostics as well too, or at least Logan does. Uh, so students may inquire with the department chairperson for, for these opportunities. Uh, and then from there, students can request the list of online options as well so that they can receive inf information about what to study for. We don't want your, your child doing this all on their own. They, they, they need to know what they need to study. Next, next slide, please. Students must always follow the guidelines that Logan provides in order for online summer study uh, to occur or individual self-study to be accepted by Logan. Copies of the guidelines are available and a synopsis is found at the uh, end of this presentation. Uh, I actually had to delete that slide because there, uh, there is some outdated information. So uh, my apologies for that. Uh, but if, if you are in need of that type of support, uh, just work with the, your counselor. Uh, and, and from there, we will we'll get you to the, the right people. Next slide, please. So uh, this presentation is actually ed code. We need to make sure that everybody knows and understands how to get into advanced math courses. I am a former math teacher, and I firmly believe that uh, the more math you have in your life uh, that creates more opportunities. It isn't the only way, uh, but uh, we have in education uh, work with an understanding that algebra is a, a gatekeeper. And if students aren't able to successfully get through algebra, they find uh, that their uh, opportunities uh, become very limited as far as uh, advancement, uh, especially as we take a look at um, different things like technology uh, and, and other areas as well too. So. There is ed code behind this, and it's our uh, responsibility to start sharing this information earlier than later so that you all understand how to get into uh, advanced placement courses, especially in mathematics. Next slide. So as we see, 10th grade, you get more options. So after Algebra 2, uh, we do get into Honors Precalculus. Uh, and then from there, we get into trigonometry and statistics. Uh, and then from there, it goes even higher. Next slide. After trigonometry and statistics, then that we get into uh, AP statistics, calculus AB or BC. Uh, and I, uh, so yeah, now we're really at, at the highest level. And I believe the highest uh, math course that we offer is um, differential equations now. So uh, we're getting well into uh, college level math. We're probably at like year two or three for someone, uh, actually uh, year two uh, for uh, somebody that actually is studying math as uh, for, for a major. All right, next slide. I think 
we're almost at the end. Okay, and then just once again, uh, there are options outside of Logan as well too. Once you have exhausted your, your career path, uh, you may be working with the, the Logan counselor as well as a counselor from Ohlone or Chabot or some other online uh, uh, way to be able to uh, continue to, to pursue math above what we offer at Logan High School. So uh, the options don't stop just because that's all that's been exhausted at Logan. Uh, we, we continue to work with you and support you through, through your learning process. Okay. So and just as a reminder, we do offer a bunch of computer science classes there as well. So uh, there may be other options that you, you have the opportunity to look at so that you're not looking at actually going to off to, to these different uh, campuses as well. Uh, and I highly suggest uh, looking at the um, computer science classes that we offer at Logan as well. All right, next slide. So yes, we got there. We want to make sure that you know uh, what Logan has to offer because that's what we're our responsibility here is at Cesar Chavez is, is to build from what happens in our uh, program all the way leading into Logan High School. So that's it for that portion of the, the math uh, seg segment. And I believe we've been working on answering as many questions as we can. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of strolling here uh, to make sure that uh, we, we do get questions answered before before we call it an evening. If you do need Mr. to- Mr. Camacho, I'm so sorry for interrupting. Before you do that, I know we kind of moved over quickly to the math segment, but we did wanna let Mr. Straley jump back into his leadership segment. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mrs. Zapata. Thank you, Mr. Camacho. Um, so hi again, I'm Mr. Straley. I'm the activities director and I, I am super grateful to be able to do this work uh, and I'm honored um, you know, to work in, uh, you know, that's, that has the namesake of a really important um, person in our, in our nation's history. I'm not from California, I'm from New York originally, but um, I feel really strongly about service, uh, which we know is a cornerstone of what Cesar Chavez, uh, you know, built a movement around. Um, and so I, I am super, super grateful and honored to be able to do this work. Uh, I think something that we learned throughout the pandemic is that, um, you know, we really need each other more than we ever thought we did. Um, and so, you know, there's going to be opportunities to, to sort of uh, make good on that in the coming year. Uh, we're going to, whenever we do go back to school, there's going to be an opportunity for us to seize the momentum that's going to come on the heels of us not being together. You know, we all need to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We all need to feel that we're, that we have value. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I believe in my heart that leadership provides an opportunity to, to experience those things, to be part of something bigger to uh, feel a sense of value and to and to do that through service. Uh, you know, I've been playing with the name of this course uh, for the last two years because in some ways I think um, leadership doesn't capture all of what we do. Uh, so much of what we do is around service um, to other students, to ourselves and to the to the broader community. And so leadership's uniquely positioned um, to help build that culture. Uh, students uh, develop confidence through a variety of experiences, you know, planning and hosting and advertising school-wide events um, that are available for all to enjoy and in a way to build a community uh, that we all are proud of and that we're all excited to be part of. Um, and that's why I think leadership is a great opportunity for students to get involved in. Uh, here's just a quick video of some of the things that we've done. Um, and if you haven't already, please follow us on Facebook uh, our PVC de facto president manages that, and so that's a great resource for parents. Uh, we, we use our, our Instagram feed to um, promote events and, you know, kind of create, um, a, you know, culture in the, you know, digital landscape. And this year we've invested some time really sort of getting our YouTube channel up and running. So if you haven't already, you know, please follow us on those social media feeds, like and subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. Everything is at CSM, CCMS Hawks. So I just want to play this quick little video to kind of give you an idea of what leadership students do. This, the, you know, the stuff that you're about to see in this video is almost entirely created by, by them.
So the last thing I just wanted to say real quick is, you know, um, middle school is a time of great transition. You know, I always say this, they come uh, to us as kids and they leave us our children, tiny little ones, and they leave us as young adults. And, um, you know, we all want to create opportunities for our kids to build that independence um, and take risk in a, in a, you know, in a supervised environment so they can learn to become independent young adults by the time they're on their way to high school. And I really believe at my core that that leadership provides that opportunity. So I want to encourage you all, you know, to come out and sign up for leadership activity wheel for sixth grade. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak, Ms. Sabata. Appreciate that. Ms. Collier, did you have a follow-up as well, too? Yeah, I just wanted to make it clear. I don't think anyone brought this up um, earlier that students who are English learners, their elective for next year will be an extra English class. And I'm saying this, I think kids need what they need, but there's also some families who probably should not be in the English learner class as their elective. So there is a form that I have been told that the district would be sharing with you that if your student is an English learner and you want them to have an elective rather than a second English class, then you can opt out, fill out the form. You'll have to hold a meeting with the assistant principals to waive your rights to that, to that right. But I just wanna make that clear because our district superintendents did make it clear that um, our admin would make it clear to families that that is an option that student, all sixth graders would have equal access to an elective should their families choose to put them in their elective of choice other than a second second English class. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Gallagher, I can add to that. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank so, you. Um, what Ms. Gallagher is talking about is you're absolutely right. So um, families of students who are in the English learner program, so that means um, students who are bilingual or trilingual or who are currently um, still classified as the English learner who have not reclassified out of the English learner program. Next year, you will be placed in an English support class. Um, you should know about this already um, because yesterday in an email, you received a letter about this as well as an attachment that was called an opt-out form. So parents that was sent to you in an email yesterday with an information letter, as well as the opt-out form. Um, in addition to that, the pre-registration form that was sent to your child today, the opt-out form was also embedded in that um, email in that form. So if you have questions about that, I know it's been a long evening tonight, please call us at the school. Uh, if your child's last name starts with an M through a Z, you may call me, Mrs. Zapata. If your child's last name starts with an A through an L, you may call Ms. Defai. All that means is if you believe that your child who is an English learner and is in the EL program does not need the English support and you don't want them to be in the English learner support class next year because you want them to have the elective class and you just don't think they need that extra support, then you will fill out the opt-out form and we'll go over that with you. Um, if your student is not an English learner and they're not in the English learner um, program, then this doesn't apply to you. It's not relevant to you and you don't need to worry about this conversation. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Yeah, uh, thank you for pointing that out because there is a big difference. Uh, next year, uh, all English learners are going to be automatically enrolled into one of our ELD support classes. And there's a major emphasis on our students that have been with us since kindergarten and uh, that still uh, have not been able to reclassify uh, and uh, prove English proficiency. And so there's a real challenge now and we have a fantastic course uh, that really works on academic language uh, so that we really get your, your child prepared for the college prep classes that are going to be uh, occurring at Logan High School, as well as trying to ensure that your child is ready for uh, first year level uh, college classes as well, too. We're going to be speaking a lot about college often, uh, so we really need to make sure that that happens. So there is a major focus on, uh, on language acquisition. So uh, 
we, we hear it often. We see many students that are able to speak and, uh, and write at, at, a, at a decent level, uh, but there still are a lot of challenges. So please make sure that your children take these tests seriously uh, so that we make sure uh, that they, so that they don't get placed into these classes uh, and, and uh, lose the ability to be able to take elective courses. All right, with that said, uh, I know there are some more questions that are out here. Uh, we are going to try to answer a few more. Uh, our apologies, uh, this format is a little different. We usually knock this out within an hour, uh, but I think the online format has shown us that uh, we, we definitely need a little bit more time than usual. So our apologies for running over uh, significantly this evening. Uh, but if you do wanna hang tight, uh, we'll try to answer a few more questions and then we'll call it an evening. Uh, and it looks like chat's been taken care of as far as I can tell. Um, that's it. Actually, it looks like we are answering questions. All right. So the, the numbers and extensions have been shared already for the assistant principals and their emails. Uh, so please reach out. Uh, once again, uh, your child will have this information as far as opt-out goes. It's, it's already there within the pre-reg forms. Uh, with that said, if there's nothing else, I think we're, we're ready to call it an evening. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, we do plan to go ahead and post this on our YouTube channel. Uh, so just bear with us as we, we wait for the, that opportunity. Thank you again and have a good evening.